slave to something something's got you down defeated this morning can I tell you this if you're a child of God you no longer are a slave by the spirit of Jesus you had the authority to say no and it counts when you tell it to flee it has to go so this morning we're gonna sing we are no longer slaves to fruit to fear no longer slaves to anxiety. No longer slaves to animosity. We don't have to be angry. It's a choice. Everything we do is a choice. We choose to do something every day. Amen? Let's choose to serve God. Let's choose to speak His words. Mm. Somebody got that. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. You are right.
child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, pray with me dear dear god we thank you again just for this time to be with you god and we just thank you first and foremost god that you are our father god we thank you that you are such a good good father god and that you love us you loved us first god and you love us no matter what god we just thank you today god that we get to call ourselves children of you god and we just stand on that today we um we don't listen to all the rest of what the world has to say, God. We don't listen to our situations and what they try to tell us. We don't listen to the lies of the devil, God. We are just here to proclaim that we are your children, God, and we get to stand on your promises, God, that you love us and that nothing can separate us from that love, God. I just pray now for your worship or that your worship was pleasing to you, God, and I just pray that the word now would just come and just invade our hearts, God, and it would just cause us to see the things that we need to fix. God, the things that we need to change to be more like you, God, to be closer and more intimate to you today. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. How is everyone? Boy, that was pretty weak, man. I'm just going to tell you, that was pretty weak. Uh, God knows, if you're upright, you're breathing, you got a lot to be thankful for. I'm just going to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, we do. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. I was looking for this. All right. Yes, way too short. But you know, I've learned that the further away it is from my eyes, the better I can see it. <laughs> Guys, it's so good to be in God's house this morning, and I just want to tell you, uh, 
Man, God really, he really hurt me with this message. He really, really spanked me. And uh, I hate to spank you with it. So I'm not. But God is. I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to be brutal about it. it God's going to, he's going to speak to us this morning. And it's probably not what we want to hear. So uh, brace ourselves and let's, let's, do, let's do ourselves a favor today. Let's be honest with ourselves. You know, we talk about in this journey that we began with, with God, we, we talk about being close to God. I remember a longtime pastor friend of mine, the one of the one of the things he, he talked about, he called it sweet fellowship. And you always knew when you were out of fellowship with God because everything just didn't go right. You, you knew that you had something between you and God, and you weren't in what was called sweet fellowship. Well, guys, I experienced that. I did experience that in, in my Christian walk. I realized that after I had been uh, exposed to the gift of Jesus Christ, the gift of salvation, I would repented of my sins there was absolutely nothing that hindered me. I was blameless, so the song speaks, before God. And then all of a sudden, it didn't take long till my old self began to come back in to the picture. Can we agree on that point? That's an agreeable point. Human nature, you know, the old man dying is a process, and it takes a little while for everything to literally die and become what God wants it to be. So in this journey, we experience the highs and lows of change. The highs and lows of change. Now guys, I want us to think of our relationship with Jesus Christ in the terms of a husband and wife coming together as one. You know, that, that's, that's, that's kind of a lengthy process. Wouldn't we say? I mean, literally, it's, it's kind of a lengthy process. I know God say, yeah, I got the last word on everything. It's yes, ma'am. Yeah. Some of us don't receive correction very well, do we? You know, it's kind of funny. We can receive correction from a friend faster than we can re receive correction from our husband or our wife. Is that true or not? Yeah. Yeah. We feel like the wife or the husband is actually picking on us, and that's not necessarily so. They may be directed by God to speak something to, that is correction to you, but you just didn't like it, feel like it had enough love behind it. This is going to be a tough crowd today. I can already tell by the experience <laughs> here. But a relationship with God is as two becoming as one. And guess what? God's not the one that needs to change. It's us. Can we agree on that point? Yes. It's us that needs to change. Why? We were born in sin. You know, Caitlin was led to speak earlier about about how that Jesus Christ, or how that Father God views us when we're covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. He doesn't necessarily see us. He sees the blood of his son, the perpetuation of our sins, and that's what he sees. He sees innocence. So guys, when we're talking about this journey, and, and, and we're talking about growing in Christ, and we're talking about really getting somewhere with God, there's a process that has to take place. And it's one that we don't readily like to involve ourselves in. Let's turn to John, and I think it's 13. John chapter 12. Guys, we're going to look at uh, verses number 23, probably down to uh, uh, 26. John chapter 12, verses number 23 down through 26. And if we'll read together, now I'm reading from King Jimmy. If 
you want to read from New Living, that's great. If you want to read from NIV, that's great. I get. Come on, that's a joke. Stay with me. I'm trying to keep you awake here. All right, here we go. And Jesus answered them saying, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground, and what, class? Ooh, such an ugly, ugly word. Die. It abideth, what's the description? Alone. Unless that kernel, unless that seed dies, it remains alone. Guys, we cannot stress this enough. This is, this is a hinging part of our Christianity, of our progress with God. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there, he, there shall he also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my Father honor. Now let's go to the Lord in prayer. We'll, we'll carry on from there. Father, we come before you, throne of grace today. Lord, I praise you. Father, today there has been evil brought in the house. And Lord, your, your spirit showed it to me. And in Jesus' name, I come before you, and by the authority, I speak to that evil, and I say, be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for the vessel. But Lord, we need to cleanse the house, that there be no hindrance today, that they may hear your word, and not the gibberish, not the cloudiness of evil. Father, I come before you today, Lord, and I pray your anointing upon this message. It's yours. It is truly, totally you. Lord, remove me from the picture. Just use me as your vessel. Use me as your voice. And then, Father, do what you will with me. But in Jesus' name, let your message ring clear to your people today that we may take it, that we may receive it, that we may assimilate it into our being, and that we may grow to become the vessel of honor you desire in your house the vessel of honor you desire in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, guys. You know, I, I remember, and I, I'm kind of going to go back here just a moment. My, my dad was a, a, was a sweet gentleman. Uh, he was a very disciplined man. And uh, after his retirement, he helped me in my business when I was self-employed doing excavation work. And he'd help me and so forth and so on. But then when he got tired of running bulldozers and backhoes, he just said, hey, I, I'm, I'm going fishing, uh, and I'm going to plant me a garden. Well, now, my dad never did anything small. We have a 175-yard field out at the farm, and he'd plant 10 rows of okra out there 175 yards long. And you're just, you're just driving up out there, and you just see this mountain in front of you like, oh, God, please, No. Please, no. May the drought come. May something happen. May the deer come and eat it all. But he would come by at 5 a.m. and he'd have his buckets and his little bitty truck and he'd have a cup of coffee and he'd have you one. One and only one. And he'd say, let's go pick okra, son. And we'd pick all summer long and he would stock all of these little... Uh, side stands where people were selling produce on the sides of the road. He would sell it to them by the pound and, and so forth and so on. And I, he just did that for fun and to make his living and, for, and to keep all of us in God's candy, which is called fried okra. Okay? Skillet fried okra. That is God's candy at our house. That we love it. But at a certain time of the year, ladies and gentlemen, he would say, no, we're picking no more we're going to leave the rest of it on there for seed. How many of you have ever shucked okra seed? We let the pods dry out and they, 
they splinter, and then all of a sudden you just kind of go to twisting them like this after they're really, really dry, and the seed begins to fall out of them, and you, 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 you just literally kind of put it in like a big pan, and then you, you just kind of dump the pan, and you, you cleanse all the stuff out of it to where you're down to this little bitty green seed. Because we're gonna we're gonna say something here that I need you to understand and I need you to put it up on a shelf for just a moment. When you pick the okra stalk up, you didn't see the seed on the root. The seed came from the fruit. We get what we're saying? The seed did not come from the root of the plant. It came from the fruit of the plant. When we got ready next year to sow the seed, we sowed the fruit of last year's seed. What had happened to the seed? It died. Its identity was no more. Now let's think about this. When we're called to bear fruit before God, when we're called to come into a relationship with Him and become as one with Him and about Him, the first thing that we got to do is our identity has to die that we got to that we can bear fruit for Him. Ugly, ugly, ugly truth. We must die to bear fruit for him. The most difficult thing for us to do is lose our identity in Jesus Christ. Because why? We are somebody. This really quiet in here. This hurts, don't it? It hurt me. Listen. You were born into what, class? Sin. We were born in sin. Adam. That's how we, we, we got it from birth, right? Yeah, we sure did. But now we're finding our identity in Jesus Christ. Monumental difference. We can't take the Adamic sin from Adam and try to bring it into the realm of God. It's not going to happen. Why do you think Jesus Christ came to redeem us from that sin? But our problem is we want to we hold on to our old life and try to embrace a new life in Christ, and it won't work. It won't work. We keep tripping over ourselves. Listen, that old man must die. Why? Because the minute it doesn't and God calls you to go deeper, that voice in your head says, no, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. You don't believe me? Analogy. How many of you have ever walked into a church that was bound by spiritual warfare? Okay, this is going to get brutal. You ain't going to want to hear this. This is going to insult some of you, and you're not going to want to come back. But it's actually the truth. When Vicki and I had, had first started ministering at the other church that we were at, some friends of ours, our son, had gotten saved. So all of us had been praying for this young man for a long, long time. And so we wanted to go witness his baptism. And so I carry my beautiful two daughters and my beautiful loving young son and my beautiful wife into this church. And we walk in there and we're just kind of peeking up on the back row. Because we don't belong to this church. We're just there to witness the baptism and the victory for his parents and the victory of God in this young man's life. Lo and behold... They get up and they do a song and my sweet little leader of the class 
Caitlin here, the leader of our worship team at this time, stands up during the prayer and says, Daddy, this church is dead. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm going to tell you right now. I, I'm like, you know, man, I'm, I'm carving her up. I'm thinking the pews, are, the, the hymnals are fixed to start flying. And I'm talking, everybody's looking at us like, we just slipped in and nobody noticed us till you opened your big mouth. <laughs> but she saw something that even the child saw. Let me, let me explain something, ladies and gentlemen. There's a thing about ki kids. They are brutally honest, aren't they? <laughs> oh, son. They don't, know, they don't have a filter. <laughs> no, 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 no. Watch what you say, because if you don't watch what you say, they're going to say it 10 times before you can get them out the doors of the church. Yeah. That's right. You better watch what you say around a kid, because they're, they're going to bring it back up. But she knew... This church wasn't right. Okay, now listen. God says, do you believe in me? Will you believe? Let's, 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 let's go back a little further. When Jesus Christ was doing his earthly ministry, he went back to his hometown and something happened. Can he, let's go back here just a second. The scripture says that many of the people that lived around him says, is this not Mary and Joseph's son that we know? This is Jesus Christ. They didn't bring their sick and, and all this stuff to him for him to heal them. Why? Because they didn't believe he's who he said he was. So they didn't bother. Oh, that's just Mary and Joseph's son. That's not the Messiah. He can't do anything for us. They didn't believe. The problem with us today in our Christian life is we're not dying to self and believing what he said. Uh-uh. Boy, it's quiet in here. Luke, I want some protection while I'm walking out the door. They're going to stone me here before it's all over with. I can tell you right now, I'm, getting, I'm going to get stoned when I get out of here. Some people are going to go to throwing brock, bricks, rocks. Let's just, let's, let's, let's just put it to you bluntly. A lot of us don't believe God can do the things that he said he could do. Philippians, what is it, 413, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Is that right? Y'all check me out. Is that right? That's right. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But, you know, here's the thing. Does Jesus still heal the sick? I believe he does. I've actually witnessed that he did. But guess what? I couldn't get there where I was. We're starting to get the drift. I couldn't get there where I was. Why? That belief in me had to die in the ground that I bring forth fruit of, of understanding God's healing. Some of y'all been in them churches where they literally take prayer requests for three hours and don't pray for nobody. All the men are saying, I wonder what she's going to do with his truck when he dies. They don't believe in healing. If you don't believe it, you can't receive it, honey. You cannot receive it. Do you believe that God speaks? Let me explain something. I know he does. God will chastise you too. God will tear you up. But don't be praying for him to tear your spouse up because it's not going to happen. Yeah. Husbands get on this thing about, well, I need to fix my marriage. Lord, you need to fix her. He's not going to fix her. He's going to fix you. Just going to tell you, just going to warn you, you better watch what you pray for. It can work for you. It can work against you. Prayer's true. You talking to God, literally talking to God, you're, you've entered into the throne room. You get into that third heaven and you get up where the truth's fixing to, it's fixing to ring out. 
God's fixing to smoke you. Listen, he loves you more than you will ever know. He wants your success. He truly, truly does. But it's not going to come the way you think it's going to come. You got to believe him. You got to trust him. You got to die to who you are to advance forward in the Christian walk. Whew. We don't like hearing this, do we? Okay. Some of us get to this point where we get, we feel like that we're, a, 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 we're, we're somebody when we're elected to a, 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 a committee at church. You ever been around them people? We get in a committee at church. I'm in a committee. I get to vote. I get to lead. And so what we do, we begin to focus on our position of committee. Oh yeah, oh yeah, honey. I've been in churches where there's been a committee where they took a vote whether to vote or not. Whew, that went over the top of y'all's head right there, didn't it? Yeah. We had to form a committee so that we could tell and instruct the committee whether we needed to vote for a committee or not. I mean, boy, it's legal. Big time legal. And I still don't know what the vote of the committee was. But anyway. <laughs> I ran a rabbit. I know, I know, Lord, I know. But we begin, to, we begin to focus on a position rather than the relationship. Rather than the relationship. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans that I have for you to prosper you, not to harm you, to bring you to an expected end. That's what God told you about yourself. But we're the ones that are the problem. Our relationship with God is not his fault. It's ours. We're the hold up. We're afraid that if we die out of this, we will never rise again. And God says, no. You got to leave first base to get to second. Oh, Nate, thank you for your amen, brother. There is a, there is a true amen right there. Keep him going. Don't, 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 don't shush him up. Let him amen. I need it today. Okay, our relationship with God says that we have been wronged in the past. I need God to fix this. I need God to fix this wrong that has been done to me in the past. And when he fixes it, I can go forward with him. How many of you said that? Let's get real. Come on, get real. Don't, don't let, you don't have to lift your hand up, but, but, but let's own it. Okay, let's own it. How many people have said, God, when you fix this, we can go further. But right now, I'm damaged. I am damaged, God. And I want you to know about it. Like he don't know. Like he don't know. Do you think you can advance with God like that. No. No. It's not going to happen. No. You see, here we are bringing the things that we have been through, the events that we've been through, and we're demanding that God take them and work them into our favor. We're waiting for our day in court to move forward with God. Let's just be honest about this, people. Our day in court is never going to be just. 
as long as we're the judge and the jury. It's not. You and I cannot delegate righteous judgment. We can't. Only God can do that. Only God can give beauty for ashes. Only God can pay back. Only God can weigh and measure the tears that were involved in our situation. Only God can do it justice. We can't. When are we going to learn to give it all to God? To lay it all upon his altar? To doubt ourselves and say, God, I cannot wear this. I cannot bear this. I need you to take it from me. And I need you to make me again new as a vessel in beauty. And just like you, I'm going down to the potter's house in Jeremiah 18. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you something, ladies and gentlemen. Is everything going good for you right now? Because if it is, you may need to look at yourself. That's not necessarily the big walk with God. Let me tell you about the big walk with God. When you're right with God, all hell's breaking loose around you. Why? Because they don't like it. That's the truth. When everything's going good in your life, you need to examine your relationship with God. If you're not a threat, the devil ain't paying attention to you. But the moment you get right with God and you begin to pray and you begin to weigh in, whew, I don't know what's wrong with my ear, but it won't hold this thing on there. It's big as a, big as a satellite dish and it won't hold this thing. I don't get it. The very moment that you begin to get right with God, it's not going to be an easy chore. It's not going to be an easy walk. It's going to be an uphill battle. That's your relationship with God. And God knows how much you can take. He already knows how strong you are. You need to know how strong you are. You do. You need to know it. Romans chapter 1 tells us that we, that we go from faith to faith. You want me to tell you my big, my big leap of faith that I took? Me and Vicky took it together. Man, we was big time in it. You see, Vicky and I got married, and, and we started out going to church because we could go eat with my mama and daddy after church if we went to church. You think I'm going to lie? I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be honest. Leader, leader lives in a glass house and he goes first. That's what, that's what happens. Transparency. So me and Vicky, we got married. We wasn't so much following God, but we was following the food. My mama was a fat woman and she could cook. She could throw down in the kitchen, bro. And so daddy would always call and wake me up. Hey, y'all going to church today? And we'd say, yeah, we're going to go. We're going to come. We're going to come to church today. Well, if y'all come to church, y'all come on by here and eat, some, eat dinner with us. My dad called it dinner. It was breakfast, dinner, and supper. It wasn't breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Daddy always said, no, son, it's the Lord's supper. It ain't the Lord's dinner. You need to get it right. So we'd go by and we'd eat dinner with daddy and mama. Well, then... God used this wonderful speaker of a man named Glenn Edward Tropp to talk, me, talk to me about tithing, about taking a step forward with God. Being a disciple, being more than a convert, learning to become a disciple. So me and Vicky went to talking about it. I'm going to tell you something. This is, this is a big deal. I was doing dirt work and it was December and January. Weren't no money. She was a Waffle House waitress. We was poor. Kids, she'd bring home her food sometimes and she'd share, we'd eat half a plate. A package of hot dogs around the house was a big deal. I got so tired of smelling them dadgum, what are them noodles? Ramen noodles. I got, man, I could, oh gosh, I got, I got tired of smelling them. We'd eat them all the time, but we was fed and we was warm. I had a letterman's blanket 
and we had a TV that we had charged on our credit card when we got married. I could, we could both lay on the couch, and I could pull my hand up and underneath her, and I could change the channels. It's the first remote control I ever had, y'all. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah. Well, one day Vicky and I had decided we were going to take a step forward with God. It was a big deal. We got paid, and the offering plate was coming by, and I pulled that money out of the offering plate, out of my pocket, and I'm looking. <laughs> and I'm looking at Vicky. I want that, I want that going up. You know, I want that like that from her, but she didn't. She just looked at me. Them eyes. Now, when my wife gets upset, she goes, <laughs> she does this lip thing. Like she's about to cry. It wrinkles up real big. She hadn't gave me the lip yet. And the plate's sitting there and the, guy's, the guy, the usher's gonna go, come on, man, you know, we've been here for 30 minutes. You gonna make a decision here or not, you know? So I dropped the cash in the plate and we both, we're watching it all the way down the aisle. <laughs> and we see it go back and we turn and we had just enough money for gas for the week. We had bought our groceries and I had enough wood cut. We could stay warm. So uh, anyway, we're laying there on the couch one night and, and the next door neighbor had given us a couch. We were so poor when we got married, we didn't have any furniture. But he had given us a couch that his dog had chased a mouse in and had a big old hole in the front. So we put us a, a sheet over the front of it. If y'all ain't never been here, man, you don't know the good times, man. I'm just telling you, if y'all ain't never been there, y'all don't know when life's good. So we're laying there on this couch. You can see your breath. And there's a fire going in the fireplace. I mean, it's that cold in this house. And so we're laying there, and all of a sudden, I reached my hand down in the couch. I felt something. And I jumped. I thought it was a spider. <laughs> I don't do spiders. Let me explain something to you. You throw a spider on me, you are entering into a risky situation. <laughs> I am uncontrollable. Do not throw no spider on me. I don't like them. I'm not responsible for my actions because I really don't, I, I don't see nothing but the big spider from then on. What I hit, I hit, okay? <laughs> So, I, man, we jump up. Vicky's, what is it? What is it? What is it? I said, there's a spider in there. She says, well, kill it. I said, no, you kill it. And we're going back and forth about who's going to kill this spider. So, man, finally, I, I decided I am the man of the house. It's got to be me. So I'm thinking, well, should I get the shotgun and just shoot it a bunch of times <laughs> or what? Or should I just get, get something and, and kill this spider? And so... Here I go, I man up. <laughs> Stick my hand down there and I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm about to do the, ah, thing, you know, to get Vicky, but I didn't. And I reached down there and I pulled it out and it was green. I said, turn the light on, turn the light on. That $20 bill that we had put in the offering plate had just magically showed up at our house. We're both in the living room. Oh, man, oh, we're doing this. Oh, look at here. 9.30 at night, we both get dressed and we load up and we go to Waffle House where she works and we share a ham and cheese omelet. <laughs> we died to self. We gave to God. And God gave back. The death the burial and the resurrection. We get in the picture? God sent his son. He had a death, a burial, and a resurrection. In order for us to become more like God, there must be a death, a burial, We must, we must agree 
to die. And then he has a resurrection that resurrects us into new life with him. We get the picture? The trouble is we don't want to die. We want to keep old life and keep what we have in our old life and never truly die. And it doesn't work that way. Listen, honey, when Peter got out of the boat, he didn't keep one foot on the rail. He got out of the boat. He walked on water. When Paul had his Damascus Road experience on the road to Damascus, when he truly met God, when he truly understood the identity of God, when he got his sight back, he said, listen, I'm the least of the apostles. In Corinthians 15, he says, I am the least. I'm the worst of the worst of these apostles. But he said, I'm going to work harder than all of them. Why? Because it's my due diligence. I want to be what God want, wants me to be. Guys, we're struggling in our Christian walk. We're struggling with unbelief. And we're struggling with surrender. And what we truly must understand is until we surrender, surrender we're never going to go forward. You're never going to get there. Let's finish up. Caitlin, if you want to go ahead and get you a song together, we're going to tidy up here. I need my prayer warriors to begin praying. I need, I, I need you to start praying right now, all of you that are true prayer warriors for God. Addictions, Listen, y'all, I've been there. I've been there where pot and all that other stuff came before bait if you went fishing. I was there. I was addicted. Rebel, sickening, living, living selfishly for me. Yeah, me and one of them last Pauls out there, we had us a date. I was going to be the greatest rock and roll singer and player in the world. Missed it by a mile. <laughs> But that didn't, that, that, that didn't get in the way of my discipline towards it. I put it before God. It became an idol. It became an idol. Addictions, idolatry, unforgiveness. Ooh, that's a biggie, isn't it? That's a biggie. So are you ready to let go of that and truly die? Let it die and bury it and let God deal with it? You're not moving forward. You're stuck in that same old rut. The biggie, unbelief. Guys, I was raised in a place where the gifts of the Spirit were gone. All we had was we had faith, hope, and charity. There weren't no gifts of the Spirit. There was no gift of healing. There wasn't no gift of prophecy. Wasn't none of these gifts like, like they said, said that they're all gone. But you know, I went back and studied that. Paul's still talking about gifts 70 years after the, they said they were gone and he's still talking about them. Why? Because they're there. They're real. Whoa. Wait a minute. Why are they doing that? Scared of tongues. They scared of tongues. Scared of them. 
I ain't scared of healing. Witness both of them. That ain't nothing to be scared of. Witness both of them. Oh, Scotty had to, Scotty had to die in his old belief, and he had to embrace him, and he had to give it to God and die down there and let God raise him up. No. That's what had to happen. Resurrected to new life in Him. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you something. Every single beautiful soul in here, I am so thankful that you came to spend your Sunday with us. You're probably having second thoughts right now. Because God said, God's going to deal with you today. God's going to speak to you. God's going to say, hey, when are you going to leave that with me? Guess what? Some of you is going to sit in that chair right there and you're going to hold on to the front one. And you ain't going to move. Have no fear though. If you don't come up here, I can come back there. I ain't scared. My heart belongs to Him. And He wants your heart to belong to Him. Are you willing to make it up here? Or do you want it back there? Makes no difference to me. It's between you and Him anyway. I'm just going to come pray with you. I ain't scared. Luke, I need, you to, I need you to stand, brother. I need you to stand and start praying. Faith, I, sweetheart, talk to daddy. Talk to daddy. Jamie Bodkins, I need you to move the mountains today, sweetie. I need, I need you to begin praying and moving that mountain out of these people's way. Father, we just come before you, throne of grace, today, Lord. I, I pray for our people. I pray for your people. First and foremost thing, what we're going to do is, Lord, we're going to enter into your house. And we're going to come with a word of thanksgiving and a word of praise and a word of worship again before you, throne of grace, today. And we speak to you, O Ancient of Days. It's your beauty and your majesty and your splendor. <laughs> it's never going to be equal. Your knowledge and your truth cannot be compared. Your love is immeasurable. And your knowledge, your knowledge cannot be fathomed. Today you're calling us to repentance, you're calling us to die to ourselves, and you're calling for us to trust you with the remainder of our days, with our journey. That's what you're calling us to do. So Father, we're not going to let you down.
If you want your relationship with Jesus Christ, it starts right now. Don't turn him away. Do not be afraid of what you're going to experience. Do not. Follow your Lord. Don't follow me. Don't follow your, 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 your friend. Don't follow any of that. Follow your God. Because He's the one that it's all about anyway. Him and you. Lord, we praise you for what you're going to do in this house today. Lord, let this be a truly, truly about you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Stand up. Stand up, guys.
um, um, while I were during praise and worship, the Lord gave me a word. And I didn't know if I was going to share it or not. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do. But after um, Scotty spoke, sorry, Pastor Scotty, after he spoke, I knew I needed to share this. And it is this. And this is not me speaking. This is the Lord speaking. He says, you have no idea how much I desire you. He said, I have no, you have no idea how much I desire to put my arm around you and reveal myself to you. He said, my, my word says, taste and see that I am good. He said, I have already made the table for you. All you have to do is sit and eat. God has already done everything for us. And all we have to do is lay ourselves down and sit at the table and allow Him to reveal Himself to us. Lay it down. There is no greater reward than laying yourself down before the feet of Jesus and saying, you teach me. of God's word and understand that listen what we give to God God takes and he gives beauty for ashes when you burn down he builds up so everyone if you will take a seat we'll be seated and we'll just we'll finish up with our announcements Jordan generally does this I don't know who's in charge of it you're in charge of it. okay uh, here we go y'all know how awesome. it goes when I'm in charge of this so y'all bear with me um, we're going to get the lights on, and uh, we can start passing the offering buckets. Uh, visitors, we want to thank you so much for coming and spending your Sunday with us. Uh, I see lots of new faces in the crowd, and that's very exciting because we love to be able to share Jesus with you. Um, we do have visitor cards that are in the back of the chairs. So if you're a first-time visitor, if you'll get one of those and fill it out, and you can put it in the offering buckets... Um, if they've already passed, then you can bring them over to the Welcome Center. We would love to connect with you and be able to talk to you and get to know you more. So please fill those out so that we can connect with you. Um, let's see. Do I got that echo going? Oh. Okay. We have, tonight we have the Liberated class with Larry Lindahl. That's at 6.30 tonight. They just started it last week. It was kind of an introduction. Am I right? And so you haven't missed much. If you didn't come last week, still come this week. It's an awesome class. He's done it here before. He's doing it again, and it's awesome. I promise you don't want to miss it. Y'all come 6.30 to that tonight. Um, then on Monday, since it's the first Monday of the month, we will have visitation. Is that right, Mom? Okay, so if y'all are interested in doing visitation, what we do is we like to go visit the people that come into our home, and we get to sit down and talk with you, and it's awesome uh, thing that we're starting back up. So if y'all would like to be a part of that, then y'all get with Vicki and Scotty. They're heading that up. 
Um, so that'll be at 6.30 on the first and third Mondays of every month. And then the second and fourth, don't forget we have women's Bible study at 6.30 as well. It's here at the church. There's child care provided, so don't let that be excuse. It's awesome. We just started it last week, really. So you haven't missed much. Like I said, y'all come. It's awesome. One more thing. Discipleship class Wednesday at 6.30. Guess what? Come. It's awesome, like I've been saying. It really is. It will bless you. It will just, it will make you want to be more intimate with Jesus. And that is what it's all about. You can come to church every single Sunday. You can hear the word every single Sunday. You can do all the Christian things, the do's and don'ts. But until you have that relationship, you're not ever going to feel what you're supposed to feel with Jesus. And uh, Luke does an awesome job. He is showing us how to really get into the word and really seek Jesus to be, have that intimate relationship. So, is there anything that I missed? Okay, did y'all hear that? Come see Miss Vicki. If there's nothing else, um, Luke, do you mind turning to Sluice this week?